Lakon Chatri. This one is from Nalung Nalung community in Bangkok. Namo. Everyone, my name is Namo from Lakon Chatri Nalung Troop, and I represent the younger generation who use arts to interpret and to express arts and culture. I am part of the second generation, and I am representing the the troop. I was born and I grew up in Nang Leng community and I feel very close to La Kuan Chatre because I had an opportunity to learn directly from Kuta. Initially, it was so many of us, but in the end, it was just me who's left. And I performed in a lot of occasions and La Kuan Chatre is also part of uh, Nang Leng community's cultural heritage and it, it is at risk of disappearing and I've been involved in documenting it. Lakon Chatri has a lot of very specific characteristics, so therefore I'm just going to turn on this video so you know what Lakon Chatri is. So I am explaining the working process. So you can see documentation is here. And there are some of those who came to, oh, the researchers who came to conduct studies and they didn't return back the information and findings. So I also try to consolidate that as well. And you can see the two parts has been divided as follow. The first one is I try to find the existing literature on the Kuan Chatri. And I discovered that a lot of researchers that used the letter issued by UNESCO. So I used the letter issued by UNESCO to try to consolidate the researchers. And we also have Thai studies, Thammasat University's innovations uh, department, and also the fine arts department in Chulalongkorn University. But there's a lot of many other places that I also need to follow up. And a lot of the studies on the Kuan Chatri are a bit scattered. So this is the process of consolidation, as you can see here in the dotted points. And they would return to the community and document and organizing of information. Then. So the first part here you can see is divided into the history and development of Nanglung community, history and development of the Kuan Chatri, and elements of the Kuan Chatri, and also the plans to make it Nang Leung community, it's one of the historical community inside Bangkok and it ages, it, lasts, it goes back to 200 years. During the early Latanakosin period, you can see here that it is outside uh, the, the vicinity of the inner circle city. But so there has been the urban development, which included that as part of the city itself. And there has been some palaces that were built and markets and Nang Leung became one of the most significant market inside Bangkok. The past 40 years, Nang Leung has changed because urban development has changed directions. However, Nang Leung community is very proud and we have a lot of historical context that is key to Nang Leung community. So besides the long history that we have documented and also the memories of the living people inside Nang Leung, you can see that in the past 30 years, there's a, there's a process of trying to revive the local cultural heritage. And this is why I'm in project right now. So the history of Lakon Chatri, it started during the Ramadan 3, 
period and it started from the southerner who uh, who came from the south of thailand and they had migrated together with their families and they moved to this area in Anglung, and it became a community of Lakon Chatri troop. And it was called Lakon Chatri Tamantuman Sabun. And so during Rama the Four, the king had permitted women to also partake in Lakon Chatri performance. And that's when it became popular to the general population. Lakon Chatri is believed to be uh, used among the sacred rituals. And during Rama the seventh, Lakon Chatri became even more popular, particularly inside Bangkok, and it was also performed in the neighboring countries. And after that, the Lakon Chatri kind of had a very fading, dark period, and it became less popular. And when I was younger, I remember there was some uh, some kind of dance that they do to pay back to the the debt that people owed to gods and the spirits, and I didn't know it was Lakon Chatri. And later on, a lot of changes had take place. There was a lot of transitions. And now to the current times, it's an innovation to document the traditions of Nanlung community. So the main elements of Lakon Chatri, the first one is to pay homage to the old masters. And that's the beginning, that's the first one. And you also have Homrong Shatri, which is the Shatri overture. So it's um, it's like a preamble of the orchestra. And then also you have particular place in which Lakon Shatri uh, uses. And after the play, the performance is done, you also have a closure of Lakon Shatri act. So you're gonna listen to it right now. This is what La Conchabri sounds like. This is Chabri Overture, so this is before the La Conchabri performance start. And so this is the homage. So you pay the homage to the old masters, the spirits, the past masters. It's a ritual to pay, to pay homage basically to the former Lakon Chatri masters. And these are the dances. So the, the basic movements consist of 12 moves and they uh, imitate nature and they try to reflect realistic natural movements and each coincides with the actual words. So the first one is anger, okay, for example, anger, love, lust, missing, longing, or imitating um, birds flying. And the 12 dances comprise of the traditional Lakon Chatri. And you can also switch one to another. You can improvise to fit to the words of the songs. And this is why a lot of Lakon Chatri has very differing dances. And there is no right or wrong. So each troupe has their own classical moves and it depends on each troupe on which they would decide. But so you can also adjust, but every other dances, they are improvised from 12 main dances of the Conchatri. And on the dances, so you have the principal, the male principal actor, you also have female principal and also the comedian equivalent role. And you also have this, which is a, a calf length uh, trousers. 
and you also have specific adornments. And if it's Yaksa, then you also have specific adornments. Hoi Kang, which is the, uh, the decorated um, adornments. And then you also have the embellishments and Grong Ko, which is the part that decorates the neck area. And Sang Wan lies across, is a jewelry that lies across the chest. And also you have the bracelets and anklets. These are the main, the main adornments of Lakon Chatri. So for actually for the female principal um, actor, it's much less uh, complicated than guys. So there are two main differences between the male principal dancer and the female principal dancer. And for Totolok, which is the equivalent of comedian and others, it's very simplified. So it's, it focuses a lot on the wrappings around the hips and the waist area. And if the row is yaksa, then you have the head of yaksa on top. And if the row is bird, then you improvise and then you also use that. And if it's the horse, then the adornments also changes. So from side to the front. So there's a lot of improvisation using the main pieces of the adornments. And if they are not the main uh, principal actors, sometimes they don't have anything adorned on the head at all. So a lot of things improvised. And so La Concha, the orchestra consists of six pieces, oboe, uh, double drums, double-sided drums, Tuk, which is a smaller uh, drum, and Kong, which is the bronze percussion Qing and Krap. And not a lot of people use Kong, Kong much anymore. And uh, Lakon Chatri, they rely only on very few pieces of orchestra. And the lyrics are Thai, a traditional Thai, and it's very accessible. So people across all classes have this feels it's relevant to them. So from those inside the palace to those who are living in, you know, locals and commoners in the markets. And uh, strength is this cultural heritage at risk of disappearing. So we have a lot of uh, works and movements that we have been trying to preserve and safeguard La Kuan Chatri. And the challenge that we have is those who own, who takes the ownership of the cultural heritage are getting older and we don't have much of the younger generation who understands it and to pass it on to the next generation. And documentation process itself, it's a problem because a lot of the information is lost and it's not systematic, um, systematically researched and documented. So it's fragmented and we don't have this archive of all the data that we have. And for the endangerment, a lot of things, the taste preference of the audience changed. So the traditional plays are slowly disappearing. And the community tourism, it becomes part of a prop of the community tourism. And sometimes it lacks the cultural heritage understanding. People don't understand that it's, it's um, important in terms of the cultural perspective itself. And for sustainability, the plan that we would like to propose, the, the first one is to create Nang Leung Hub. So we can start from create a community hub, right, to, um, to also disseminate and also to document knowledge on the Khan Chatri. And secondly, creating the eco museum system. So the third plan that we would like to propose to make sure that this is sustainable for the safeguarding of cultural heritage is to use innovations and technologies to document cultural heritage from Nang Leung community. So this is Ban Nang Leung, and this is the hub in which La Con Chatri is preserved and it's also safeguarded and also it's a knowledge hub. So I would like to add in, um, we have uh, so much information and we have a lot of things that we can still do research on. And there's so many outsiders coming in. So to avoid the confusion and the fragmentations of the existing data, the historical data, we created this hub to make sure that the old information, the current information, the current data, all the findings 
are consolidated and it is more concretized. So we create an exhibition space. We have this interactive um, exhibition and we want to make sure that the audience and the visitors also can participate in the space. And we're just, we're not only looking at the house itself, but we're looking at the area as a whole. So we want to create it as an area that's going to be strengthened. And we also want to bring in participation. We want to bring in income generating activities to make sure that this is sustainable. And that's an actual space. So I'm just thinking on top of that now. And this is community lab. So it's, it's the same information, but it's available online because Nang Leung has another issue, which is the lack of security of the property itself. So that also increases the risk of these cultural heritage disappearing. And so we want to make sure it becomes digitized and we want to make sure that there is the page. And now we have the page and we have over 2,500 people. 2,600 people are the followers of this page. And lastly, we need a platform that's going to be the virtual. And this is the next step. So next, after the website, we also want to use this data. And we want to use the technologies to, to, to also document and um, to share the information. For example, the dances of the old masters. Right, so now we can use technologies to document all aspects of it. Instead of just being 2D, it could be 3D and it will be much more fascinating. And also we can add values. So therefore um, we can use a lot of things like 3D printings and we can connect with other partners, the hubs and, and use all the existing innovations to create this platform Nang Leung platform. So, I mean, this is also a play to the, the fact that they lack their security to the rights of properties. And I think this is the way in which we can try to manage to make sure the legacy goes on. And this is one of the first prototypes that we, that we came up with. Thank you so much, this, this last team. You have so much information. It's very exciting. And if the first commentator, Kun Wilani from Government Savings, please. So I have to say that I really admire the team because they are so they're, they're really they really know they have a lot of very strong knowledge. The presentation is very well done. It's very covered in all aspects. So I really admire that. It's great. I really like it because I was talking to Kunte and I was like, well, it's difficult. How do you create sustainability of Lakon Chatri? Because performing arts and traditions of the former generation. I mean, if it's me, I don't even know if I like it. If it's just me alone, I probably might not go. So I need friends and I need somebody to convince me to go. Even with my generation, I mean, I would need some convincing. But you did it very well. That's, that's very well done, the presentation. I like it. So if Kunte Tat from Touchpoint Group, can you please? No, no more. That's that's great. I I really would like to. Um, yeah, I, I would love to compliment you. It's great. Like Nang Leung Hub Museum Innovation Technologies. That's that's something you already initiated, and I think you already see some outputs and outcomes to a certain extent. And it seems like the activities or the platforms to make Lakon Chatri Nang Leung. Um, survived, it's already quite strong, but what's missing is the media. So what I mean is the um, the media, I, I see that you already have your own media. So you have you have the, the Facebook media and you already have more than 2000 followers. And actually to think on top of that, to transition, to increase more engagement, you can connect with the schools, at least in the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, you know, and you can think further if you can partner with these schools, you would also increase those who would be the patrons, the supporters, and also the audience. So this is the first model that you can do it immediately. You can do it inside the country. It will have high impact, and you can just share it existing um, platform, and they will have your audience. I like it a lot. Thank you. I love your presentation. Okay, uh, Kaylin from UNDP, please. 
Thank you so much for a very, very detailed explanation of um, La Concha tree in Nanlun district. I actually learned a lot um, and um, and I feel like this is something that you really have a lot of knowledge about. And as a matter of fact, I don't feel like, you know, it's presented by a young person. It's actually, I'm, I feel like I'm listening to a person who has lived through the whole history of uh, uh, La Concha tree. So very well done on that. Um, in the beginning, I was uh, finding a little bit difficult to understand uh, who is your target audience? Uh, who are you bringing uh, the culture to? But I think um, at the end, you reveal the answer because you're building this center. So it's actually for uh, for everyone to understand the culture, to, to have this experience. So speaking of the experience, I think for me, my quick reflection of of, you know, living in Bangkok uh, for four years, I was, I was actually living in Nanglen district as well. Um, if I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, it's actually near uh, the UN ASCAP um, headquarter, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm very familiar with that community. And um, and I also I've been learning uh, Muay Boram uh, for three years. So for me, I feel like if you want to bring this experience for people in their day to day basis, um, it's actually to design some of the, you know, learning experience that make people feel like there's no a very high bar or lower the barrier so everyone can learn something about it. It doesn't look as complicated as as it seems, right? Another example is like, you know, ballet dance um, looks so fancy and um, it seems like it's going to take a lot of effort to do that but now there's also a trend of you know um this adult ballet um you know people just learn it so then they have like beautiful uh even for their whole uh like physical health um you know if they have back pain and stuff they actually learn ballet to reduce that because they have a better posture when they are sitting and standing. So I think my question to you is that how can you lower the barrier for to bring um, this traditional dance uh, for everyone? For me, I really enjoy learning Muay Boram because you know it makes so much sense like to understand the culture that this this um, different type of martial art is imitating different kinds of animal and the meaning behind it. And it's, I just enjoy understanding, like discover um, the meaning of it. So I do think that if you, um, you know, bring this kind of experience to um, to people and especially to uh, many of the experts um, in Bangkok, um, it will actually give them a welcoming message, like uh, to try it out, to learn it, and it's not as difficult, complicated as it seems. So I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you.